um, and then I'll introduce you both, and then we'll talk a little about values, and then we'll get into it, you know, that is basically about the Blackness Project, the Frank Conversations, Juneteenth, the situation here in Buffalo, you know, et cetera. All right, sounds good. And, and, and you know, our plans, hopes for the future. Oh, and oh, we always end up with how can people get more involved. Okay, you sounds know, good. Or find out more, learn more, whatever they want to do to get more involved. So. Okay, Facebook said they're ready if you're oh, ready. Oh, good. Okay, so... So, oh, and I'm going to turn off my ringer on my phone. I hope you have water if you need it or anything like that. Uh, yep, yeah, I'm all good. Okay, good. Oh, and meet Richard. Re- meet Richard. There, there's How Richard. are you, Richard? Hey, Richard, how are you? Hello. Corey, Corey and Thank Julie. Thank you for all your hard work. Thank you. <laughs> and actually, Corey, I thought you might even know Richard because he's been doing different things in media for a while. Um, I, I feel like I heard the name, it's, but I really can, I barely can see. I got this incredible glare from oh, the sun. I know the gl- but, glare uh, is a lot. Yeah, I'm just working on my tan right now. Yeah, well, you go right ahead. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll never I'll never catch up, but maybe I'll start working on mine too. <laughs> <laughs> you got to get outside for these beautiful days. I know, I know, but instead I'm in the studio and it's all black, but it's a lot cooler. I'll say that. Anyway, okay, so we're going to, now, so you know it'll be just under an hour, too, just so you know that. Too. Okay, great. Okay, okay, so yeah, we're Under ready. an hour, or exactly. Yeah, like, yeah, because of, okay. of the radio. <clears throat> so that keeps us honest about the time. So okay. you have the timer set to 59.59. Yep, it is. Okay, well, then flip, we'll the flip the switch that turns switch. on the timer. Sure. And, and when you put the clap in front of your face, you're on the air. Thanks. Welcome to Talking Peace with the Western New York Peace Center, being brought to you here and produced here at Think Twice Radio in the home of the future, thanks to our friend and producer, Richard Wicca. Thanks, Richard. And we also thank our friends at WBNY, Buffalo's original alternative radio station, 91.3 FM. Thank you very much to our friends at Buff State. Um, and especially at the station there. And um, and then, you know, all the thankfulness reminds me of our indigenous friends and our um, the fact that we're now currently all on Seneca land, on Haudenosaunee land that was really stolen from the Senecas through um, broken treaties and violence of, of different kinds. Um, so, and yet they still remain thankful and they always start their events off with a Ganonio or a Thanksgiving address, which, which just reminds us of all the people here and, and the, the love that made, made it possible and that, um, and that we're here on Mother Earth and the thankfulness to Mother Earth and to all of the plants and uh, and the trees, the different creatures, and the different elements in this creation, and of course the Creator, and the original instructions that we were given in every part of the world, and that we sh- need to follow those those instructions so that life will continue in this creation. So um, after that, then they would say Nyawe, which just is sort of like Ashe, really, um, just you know acknowledging let it be so and then the people would say no so you could say no no <laughs> no no thank you thank you thank you so that's the thanksgiving did i say it right you did you did no it's like no with a with a y stuck in there because it's really yes <laughs> So, you know, <laughs> anyway, well, I'm very excited about this show because today we're going to be talking with two people in the community who are doing so much and uh, contributing so much. And we hope this show will be part of that, contributing to uh, what we, you know, our plans for the future here by looking at and talking about the Blackness Project and Juneteenth 
and the situation we're, we're having here in Buffalo and our hopes and plans. So I just, I'll go as the, the Haudenosaunee do counterclockwise. So we'll start with Julian. Uh, Julian Russell is a, an actor, a comedian, um, a community. I, I've said your support to the community because I know you involve yourself with lots of different <laughs> groups and helping out the community and, and the young people. I, I know you said you were just teaching a class. So welcome, Julian. Thank you for having me. Oh, please. How are you today? Oh, I'm so glad, so glad to be here with you and with you all because I also want to say we, we're lucky enough to have Corey Green. Hi, Corey. Hello, hello. How are you? Oh, I'm so glad, so glad to have you here. So, Corey. I was hoping we had like a, a pause button. Once you said Julian's name, we need like a pause button. <laughs> oh, a pause button. Hopefully, Richard. Richard can add that in later. Oh, he'll have yeah, to add yeah. that. Yeah, the applause button. Or, you know, some kind of, yeah, a big, a big applause button would help. So I'll, I'll just do my own applause here for him and for you. Because I want to say for the Blackness Project, which is just a stellar project that was, um, I mean, we can go into the history of it, but talk about, we've been talking about how we need those frank conversations. Well, they certainly were started right off with the Blackness Project, which was all about that. And, and which award-winning, wonderful um, uh, offering to the community and to the larger communities to have those frank conversations about race. And, um, and also, uh, you know, you have you have um, uh, the Black Rose Productions that you do, and just a lot of of uh, work for the community that you are offering. So we're thrilled to have you here, Corey. And we do Thank want to you. talk about Juneteenth, and I know you know all about Juneteenth too. Oh yeah. But because uh, that's coming right, you know, it's right upon us. So the days of Juneteenth, and back to the Blackness Project. It's intimately connected. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, when we first released the film, uh, Julian was a producer on it as well. Oh, really? I uh, wanted to uh, make sure that, uh, you know, we just had people speaking uh, right from the heart, nothing scripted, and uh, asking candid questions just to create that forum. And uh, every time we had a screen, we will always do a panel discussion because we felt like the conversation was always... Right. Uh, way more bigger than the actual film. The film is just like to get the engine going and getting people ready to speak. And uh, even I don't know if you made it to the uh, African Cultural Center when we had a screen. Yes, I was there for that. I was there. Right, and then. <laughs> I was there and also at the UU Church. Now I didn't make the one at the um, at uh, oh torn torn space theater. I didn't right, even right. know about that that one till I was. Well, you were actually at the one the uh, the one that I was thinking of where it was an uh, older black man, oh. older white woman, and they kind of was talking about like stuff unresolved oh. even back yes. during the civil rights movement. We got footage of all that in moments like that. Uh, made us realize that, you know, we, we were on the right path with uh, opening the doors to have those conversations you're, because without the film, they would have never had that conversation. So you're not kidding. No, it was great. It was so great. So one more thing I want to do. And I think you're sort of doing you're you're really starting to do do it even before we got to it as far as values in the conversation so when you're just talking about frank conversations you know so what are the values when we think of this topic the values that you want to really uphold and um so so uh why don't we start with you Corey? because you were already really starting on that and then and then yeah well our, our values are you know, essentially to uh, create voices uh, for people to speak. Uh, but the number one thing is always to do it in a way uh, where it doesn't become, you know, argumentative or like something that's deflective where uh, we can't really like voice ourselves without, you know, screaming, yelling or creating forms where it's just a conversation that'll be forgotten about the next day. So uh, our, you know, number one value was to do that in our films, mm -hmm. even with Forgotten City, which was released in 2006. Uh, you know, any documentary work that we've done, we always want to speak conscious and for the community, because sometimes 
you know, if people don't come in our neighborhoods and you watch the news every day, you can get a bad stereotype on what it's like to uh, be black in America and to be a black man uh, born and raised from the east side of Buffalo. So uh, we always want to make sure we're, we're put in a positive light because some people uh, may not get the opportunity to see us that way. Well, thank you. So the positive vibe, the the honest conversation, positive those, vibes are, only. <laughs> those are those are so important. And Julian, are there is there a value or two that you want to especially mention that you think of when you think of the topic of of the Blackness Project and uh, uh, well, I mean, well, Black Corey Buffalo. actually Corey actually covered it all, but uh-huh. I mean, it just has to be said, right? We. We, we, we made the film to let people know that we're not the stereotype. All black right. people are not angry. We're not hooping and hollering all day. We're not swearing pants down to the ground. You know, that that's not right. everyone, you right. know? Right. And we have, you know, we have a point to prove that we are all equal and we want to be, you know, treated as such. And we have things going on just like everyone else. Right. Well, it, it's done. First of all, I, I will and we'll go on and I, I can go on plenty about just how beautifully and wonderfully it was done. I do want to mention two values that I think of very much so in the Blackness Project, um, which is, uh, well, what Dr. King talked about, unarmed truth and unconditional love. So it is positive, but it's still truthful. It's still truthful. So, you know, I mean, it's positive and truthful, which because truth is, you know, we have to know the truth because the truth is going to set us free, right? Because that it has its own value. I mean, even, you know, uh, Gandhi put it as like the greatest thing was truth seeking was the word he used even for that whole spiritual journey was because we're looking for what is really true. You know, and and the other, of course, unconditional love. You know, so Dr. King said unarmed truth and unconditional love will have the final word. And so I want to say it was it was just a wash in truth and love. You know, the Blackness Project and still is. So so um, so much. Thank you so much. Uh, It's available on Amazon Prime. So anybody watching or listening. Uh, you can watch the Blackness Project on Amazon Prime, um, and ironically, most of our views, which we're, you know, we're close to about like a million, maybe, uh-huh. um, are like really from the UK. So it's interesting. Really? Wow. Uh, that another country is, you know, interested in, you know, race in America, and you know, I'm, I'm just very uh, thankful that we're able to get it out worldwide, and obviously, you know, just coming from Buffalo, New York. And, uh, you know, going across the globe. So thanks, everybody who watched it and who plans on watching it. We definitely appreciate it. <laughs> so so can I ask you to go to the beginning of, like, how did you come up with it and how did it sort of unfurl, develop? How did it um, develop? Originally, I watched a project called The Whiteness Project mm-hmm. that was um, created by Whitney Dow. And uh, we were just wrapping up... Uh, another feature film called the Romans, which is also on Amazon prime. Um, my producer, uh, showed me the whiteness project. I believe it was maybe like 2015 or 16, Mm -hmm. maybe even earlier. Um, but I made a point to, you know, I watched it. I kind of skimmed through it. Then I made it a point to go back and watch it, you know, from top to bottom, Uh every single interview. And my original concept of it was, you know, I went into it like, you know, this, you know, kind of like a, a negative stereotype. Like, mm-hmm. here we go again, talking about the loss of white privilege or mm-hmm. affirmative action. It's like, here we go again. Mm-hmm. But when I took a closer look, uh, I, I thought it was a really uh, a good idea to get something at least started because those uh, people that he interviewed probably couldn't talk about things like that uh, around other ethnicities or races where they will feel uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. So he did create a forum for, to speak candidly, although we may not have liked some of the things uh, that was said. Uh, but at the same time, uh, it gave me the idea to not create something so much as a response to it, but just another version, uh, from, you know, black 
uh, American's point of view. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had them watch that first. And then that was always our first question. Uh, what do they feel about the Whiteness Project? Because, you know, I remember like my initial thoughts and then how I kind of turned over a new leaf after I watched a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So uh, we did the same thing with uh, everybody that we interviewed. We had them watch it first and then we went on to uh, other issues. And, mm -hmm. you know, it took us from Buffalo to uh, New York. Uh, we did interviews in D.C., Mm -hmm. uh, I, I went to uh, Utah where we did uh, our ancestry. So it took us wow. on a journey where we just initially started just to interview a handful of people to their reaction and it kind of grew into something else to what it is today. Mm -hmm. And Julian, how did you sort of get involved and, and what, 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 were, what were the parts that you uh, felt most important at the outset? Uh, well... Again, as Corey said earlier, uh, I did production on the film. So uh -huh. basically, um, my job is to make his job easier. Oh, okay. He's the director. Uh -huh. The producer's right. job is to make his job easier. So uh -huh. I called, you know, a few people that I knew would be honest and real that have went through situations, you know, that made mm -hmm. them who they are now, you know. And I called them up, asked them would they be available to do interviews and be 100% honest. And mm -hmm. that's what they did. That's mm -hmm. what we got from the Blackness Project. Yeah. Not to mention, I think you was like the first one that we interviewed, <laughs> just kind of oh, like yeah, just yeah. throwing it out there. Remember, we was on Delavan and Portland, where we do a lot of our community works. That's the neighborhood that we're from. And I really just started, I think it could have even been on my phone. I just started asking Julian a few questions. Right. And we were just kind of throwing an idea around even doing it. And he uh, answered so well and powerful. We It was one of the first interviews on the film. Yes, right. wonderful. Well, you know, I want to say what really struck me was your very, very healthy and, you know, really wonderful response to the Whiteness Project. So when, I, when I've, I've talked about the, about the Blackness Project a lot because it really made such an impact on me. And you're right, that, one, that time at the, at the African um, Cultural Center especially it was it was just so powerful. I was sitting right next to Dorothy Hill, myself. That's where I was sitting. So I I mean it was it was it was just what can I say? Really, so so powerful, so powerful. But the part that sort of stuck with me too is now it's people. So people have asked me, and I think I watched the Whiteness Project then to find out or something. And somebody said, "Well, was it racist?" And I, I want to say. I've gotten on WBEN and said I'm a racist. In other words, racism is in the where the air we breathe. We have to know it. That we think we can say that we're not affected by it. There's so many ways that so many vestiges and so many, you know, um, subtle and ridiculous ways that it is just the legacy is still here. So so we can't say that it's something outside of us it's 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 back to the air we breathe and so when somebody asked me was the whiteness project racist well i felt like well of course it was you know because if they're going to be honest if they're going to really be honest there would be some really things in there if you take a range of people and asking probing questions and then what, what really disturbed me was that with your very healthy response that was the same thing, to just say, let's have the honest conversation, and you went to work to them, and you wanted to work with them. And then oh, yeah. that was where the real problem comes. That Yeah, we, um, I reached out to Whitney. I know his dad. Mm -hmm. uh, his dad has been in a uh, tri-main building for years. His dad uh -huh. is Peter Dow. Uh, -huh. uh really good fellow. Uh, him and Whitney, you know, they're great people. Right. Uh, I wouldn't say anything uh, bad uh, to that effect. Uh -huh. uh, but that was always my original goal was sure. to create a project and then bring them both together. And then, you know, just try something. I mean, we've been at this fight for uh, black rights for a very long time. Right. So uh, I try to be creative in understanding and speaking and listening to when it comes to race relations because it's such a, 
a slippery slope. Right. So I'm willing to do things and willing to try things mm-hmm. that maybe the average person is not. And um, even having Carl Palladino as one of the panel, one of the panelists on my first one, I received a lot of backlash for that and a lot of flack for I'm that. Sure. But <laughs> yeah, but, but once again, mm-hmm. where you, you know, these are people like he's running for Congress right now. These right. are the kind of people that actually run the country. Right. So, you know, to get them or even like uh, someone like a Trump where how upset they may make us with some of these statements to get them in a in an aspect where we can have a conversation and have some kind of understanding to get real things done. It just has to happen. Right. And it, it, it's like if I'm in a room full of people that look like me and are going through the same thing as us, as me as well. Right. We all know our problem and we all know the solutions we have to do within a community. We have to, you know, go farther beyond that scope. So, right. uh, you know, having them on the panel, like I said, we received some criticism and some thought it was a brilliant idea and praise. And at the end of the day, it didn't stop. Uh, what we set out to do when making a film. And, you know, we, we'll continue to do it. If, if we were to do a part two right now, uh, we would do the same form with even a bigger panel and more discussions to be had with uh, people that are in position. Right. And, you know, it was something that was very non-political. I, you know, I'm not a politician. Right. Julian's not a politician. We do right. community effort because we want to from the heart, mm-hmm. not because the camera's there and we want them to see us doing it, see doing our good deeds right. that we do every single day of our life. Right. So, you know, uh, at the end of the day, you know, we're willing to try uh, things that, you know, can really be meaningful. Oh, it is so meaningful. And I want I just really hand it to you. And, you know, I mean, I, I feel... It's such a missed opportunity, and I wonder if maybe even now after, I mean, this was so big, really across the country, what just happened, and uh, oh, yeah. the massacre, the massacre. And so I wonder if maybe now they might be willing. I, I'm just, because there are those frank conversations starting to happen, you know. Yeah, uh, but even with the last, project uh we're kind of beyond a point of uh conversation we're at the point now of action uh-huh. so i'm taking uh the people who actually really get things done opposed to just because i would feel like a hypocrite if we just sat around just talking all day what should be and what we could do sure. and discussing the problems and the solutions so our new goal is i've uh, been getting people together like-minded people together and uh, initiate real plans and this this is once again something non-political this is something that right. uh, we just know that needs to be done because um even when the smoke clears and you know i won't say people is going to forget about what happened and it's, it's sad to say that we got to associate a massacre with our city uh but what's going to happen in a year or two from now or two years from now and then what Oh. What are we going to do then? And, oh. and what are our preparations uh, if something were like that to happen in the future? And uh, what are we doing to even have more than one grocery store on the east side? So right. those are the deeper conversations that we're willing to go to. We already know what happened, and, and our heart goes out to the victims, to the families, to the survivors. Uh, but we're at a point now where... We, we, we have to have enforce action from uh, like-minded in- individuals, uh, putting our own self to the test. And, uh, you know, enough with, uh, you know, going to the podium and getting ready for the cameras and trying to say oh, no. the best things that we right. can say. And, you know, look smart, look intelligent and say something great and then forget about it the next day. Oh, so no. right. uh, we've been discussing, you know, uh, real change. No, absolutely. I mean... Definitely, action is needed. So, action, but, you know, that, that um, the, you know, the action, you know, sort of move, how to move things forward is also, um, you know, something that, that we've been working on at the Western New York Peace Center and what everyone needs to be working on, certainly. And for the, as you say, for people who aren't, you know, for those who aren't, willing or or ready or something um well that's all of our problems but it's not all of our necessarily thing we are going to focus on because moving forward 
you know, uh, there's a there was a sign there, honor them with action. And there's a lot there's a lot of action needed. And it's so um so much needed. Let me ask you J Julian, um what what do you think of of some of the actions? I know you were just teaching a class, which again is conversation, but it's also action because the formation of, you know, people's thoughts is very much a part of of the solution. So, do you, do you want to talk about that? Oops, um, I'm not hearing you. Somehow your microphone is off. I'm sorry about oh, that's that. That's right. That's all right. Okay, so uh, I have one of my students in the car with me. Oh, actually. okay. So, oh, yeah. Um, I mean, I'm really big on accountability, right, Miss Vicky? Absolutely. If everyone can just be accountable for what they're doing or what they're not doing, mm -hmm. then we would actually be starting somewhere, right? You know, like some people who consider themselves racist don't even know why they don't like black people. You know, or, or don't even know why mm -hmm. they don't like white people. Mm -hmm. You know, like, where did it come from? Like, who made you or what made you become a racist? You know, you can't even you can't even give a straight answer. And then that's where you're you, you're not holding anyone accountable. So it's just a bunch of real. It's really hoopla, if you ask me. But it's been going on for so long that well, we, we can't even erase it. It also depends on what we mean by what we're saying. So, I mean, like I just said to you that I said on WBEN that I'm a racist. Well, am I or not means there's it. You can define that differently, right? You know, it can be like those. It can be the roots of the very most subtle, you know, just misunderstandings or mistakes, or it can be a rampant, you know, aggression that is murderous aggression that we're just talking about so you know that I, I it's 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 hard to even know what people mean sometimes when they're speaking but certainly holding people accountable and and people being responsible to wa walk the walk and not just talk the talk is, right. is is so critical. You know, if you're, I don't know if you're willing, but if your student wanted to be introduced and and say a word, they would be welcome. I don't know. That's up to you. I'm not trying to put, no pressure. No pressure here. What was the class you're teaching while they were thinking about it? Entrepreneurship. Oh, and cool. And public speaking. Yeah. And public speaking, really? Yeah. I took a course in public speaking in my uh, master's in social work. So public speaking, this would be a great opportunity for them if they want to. They don't have to jump right in. It's just when they're ready or if they felt called by some one of the questions. Um, like, well, this one, we're just talking about how to hold people accountable or what we're holding them accountable for. What does that mean? Right. Well, I mean, you have to look at it. So sure. mm -hmm. people, people, and I, I don't, I want to make sure that I say this the right way. Sure. People look at black men as a threat. Why are we a threat? What have we done? You know, like, right. just think about it. Right. People who you don't know, people who you have had no interactions with can look at you, give you a stereotype and treat you a certain type of way just because of something they heard. Right. You haven't even you haven't even been through it yourself. So right. what I mean when I say accountability, you're 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 judging someone off of someone else's actions, not even off of something that you've been through. Right. That's just ridiculous. It's like, ridiculous. if I feel some type of way about a person, that's because that person did something directly to me or to hurt my family. Right. Not because someone 300 years ago allegedly did something to someone. You know, it's just ridiculous. Right. People don't even have a real answer when they ask, what have a, has a, a white person done to you or what has a black person done to you? You know, one of my theories is that it has to do that there's some of it is fear that is based on guilt because people know 
Now tell me what you think of this, because this is what it seemed to me, is that because black people and indigenous people and brown people, you know, BIPOC, um, black indigenous and people of color have been so, so horribly treated for so very long, so unjustly treated, and even when supposedly things have gotten better and they haven't gotten better enough, and, and there's all kinds of legacies from the past that still persist in these huge um, injustices and, and just, again, blatant, horrible treatment. That guilt the, of the knowledge, it would be, uh, you know, that people can feel through that guilt, you know, at some kind of a fear because, you know, I, I saw somebody where they said, you know, you're lucky that we're asking for equality and not revenge, right? Well, I mean, Which, just, I'm, I'm just, not saying, you know, I'm not just, trying to go in a bad direction. I'm just trying to say. No, no, I mean, just, just yeah. think about it, though. Okay, so I'm glad that you said that. Corey can't get back in, by the way. I don't oh. know. He was bumped oh, out. Oh, oh, is that what it is? Here, let me but see. On the, yeah. But with, like what you were saying, think about it, okay? Sure. So they came into the east side of Buffalo, New York, okay? Right. Killed 10 innocent people, um, eight of which were our elders, that means grandmothers, aunts, uncles, uh, deacons from the church, uh, elderly people who raised us, taught us the way, taught us right from wrong, right? Right. Came into our community, shot them dead at the only grocery store in our community. Right. Us angry black men and women Didn't did what? Did what? We love, came together, cried, hugged. Right, right. Gave, are still giving. We didn't riot. We didn't right. shoot up. No, we didn't right. we, we hate right. this. We didn't hate that. We're not on the news to this day. The newscasters are still in our community till this day. It's one month and a day later right. from the massacre. Right. We still right. have news cameras right. in our face. We still have not once saw where Buffalo, New York, one of the most violent cities in the United States of America, has showed their entire behind. Right. Like, quote unquote, the black people do. Well, at first, as you say, it just shows the ridiculousness of any feelings like that. But that's where uh, the accountability comes into play. Right. Why are we right. such a bad people if well, you're, we're not, not doing bad things? You know what I mean? Why are we labeled as the, the, the bad people? Why can't we get ahead? Or why do we have to work so much harder than everyone else to get ahead when we're still being stumped to the ground while right. we're trying to get up and get ahead, Ms. Right. Right. No, you're so right. I, I, absolutely. It's the the injustice couldn't be more extreme. It couldn't be more extreme because I want to say what I've seen is that black people have created, as I'm going to quote, quote Cornell West, the love warriors, the truth tellers and the love warriors and, and have saved that save the ass but it's this democracy by the media, time after time. And they have time. us looking like we're right. animals. Right. We're not doing anything but trying to right. be equal. Right. And why are we fighting so hard to be equal? It's ridiculous. Like, why? No, why, it's like, ridiculous. Why? I have a college education. I have right. a family. I own a home. I right. take care of my family. I right. do stand-up comedy. I make the yes. world laugh. Yes. I'm teaching kids. Yes. Why am I labeled as uh, uh, almost an animal. There's no because of the color of my skin. It's ridiculous. There's no. There's no excuse. There's no. I mean, there are reasons, but the reasons are. What do I want to say? Greed. You know, back to racism. You know, uh, uh, um, learned, learned power, power, power. Power, um, uh, uh, greed, and 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 lust for power, and for money, and for money, that's another one, because back to on the backs of of black people, and black indigenous and brown people, that the history, but I mean, yeah, it, it, it's it's all it, it's 
I, I, now you got me started. Time. I'm 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 oh, the I'm funny sorry. guy. You know, Corey gets you know Corey gets really in depth with you know the society and everything. But we're they look at us as liquid money, Miss Vicky. We're the biggest spenders, but you guys still treat us like a piece of crap. You take all our money, take all of our money, and we're still just the lowest on the totem pole. It's you know like it couldn't we, be more unfair and unjust. And I want to say. Uh, you have saved our democracy means black people have saved our democracy time after time. And what, what, what did we get? I know the shaft, uh, the shaft getting shot by police. Uh, just unbelievable. But um, let me just let me just I'm, I'm trying to get Corey back in here. So just here. Why don't you talk a little bit about <laughs> your entrepreneurship class? Okay, well, um, I do public speaking and entrepreneurship. I teach children a little bit about finances, um, you know, just just things that they don't teach in school. I have a phenomenal student. Her name is Nisa. She's top student in her class. She knows all about the finances and everything like that. You're back, Ms. Vicky? Yes, I am. I am. Okay. I am. I, I'm sorry. I mi I'm sorry. I missed what you said, but I won't ask you to repeat it because of our listeners. They already heard it. So I bet it's, it's okay. a great class, and I, I, I won't push on your person there to talk. But you know, public yeah, speaking. Yeah, she's a little shy. Okay. Well, public speaking just means think about your message, but that's all right if people are shy. You know that. Th actually, can I tell you if you want to bring your people on the show? For their final thing. Well, they're children. I teach children, actually. Well, children. So your children yeah. absolutely are. We did a show for our Peace Jammers, um, and we had them on the radio. For mm -hmm. Talking Peace. So you could have as one, you know, in a couple of weeks or something if you want to. Um, okay. Or a couple of months or at a time in the future. You could... Uh, we can do a show together, a talking peace show, and have your class have have a discussion or or prepared speeches or whatever they want to do. I'm down, Miss Vicky. Oh, that's all I do great. is talk. I, that's oh, all I do. Because you know what? There, I'm trying to get them out of it. I'm letting them know you got to read the room. You got to know what's going on. Right. It, it, it flows. You know. Yes. It, it's, it's just something you have to well, get inside. Of that's you. where that's where it's a little bit different if you're on a video radio show because there is no room. Right. You know, you're. Right. But then, actually, in some ways, that can make people more comfortable because you're just talking to each other, you know, and you see, you know, who's in who's there in front of you, right. and uh, and you can concentrate on your message, which uh, you know is so. Really, that's yeah, man, the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, we'll bring them on the radio. That and would they'll be, be a, great. You know, a little less shy. Yeah, well, when they're ready, when you're, when it's a, when the timing's right, it'll happen. But I want to tell you, one of the most fun things I do, when, that I get to do when I get to do playing, you know, well, I said playing, <laughs> which is included, you know, and working with young people, with children and youth. You know, we have a Peace Jam program we do. Time to time, that just finished, actually. That's why I said they were just on the show as part of their Global Call to Action project. Then we have a camp that's coming up, Camp Peace Prince. And mm -hmm. that will be um, coming right up uh, in the last two weeks of July. So that's for right. eight and up. And we take youth assistance, too. If some of your people are, uh, depending on what your ages are, they could be campers or youth assistants. Oh so, yeah, maybe. Now yeah, and my we go mentor. swimming, and we have field trips. We go. We'll we'll be um, housed at St. Columba Bridget there on Hickory, mm -hmm. and right. uh, we'll be swimming in the JFK Center, and we'll be going up to. I think this. I think it'll be. Go, we'll be going to the Niagara Falls Underground Railroad Museum and the Maid of the Mist for one. Oh, and okay. we'll be going to Ganondagon which I've heard about for years, and I've followed indigenous things quite a bit, but I don't really know the story of Ganondagon, except that it's a tribal center for the Haudenosaunee. Oh, 
Yeah, so okay. so anyway, so more to follow, but we would love to have your entrepreneurs and public speakers on any time and any way they like to come on. Absolutely. Yeah. And my mentor, he does a financial literacy class for children as really? well. Wow. Cool. Yeah, so Very cool. I'm working with her, and yeah, we're just going to get these kids all the way together. Sure. Great. Well, that sounds great. Well, so, not sure what happened. So, Something's going on. Oh, so, well, and it may, it may have been that we just left him waiting too long. So, um, anyway, anyway, in the meanwhile, let me ask, uh, you know, about uh, Juneteenth. So, what what would you want to tell? Um, well, first of all, let's just, I think we could almost assume that the listeners know that Juneteenth was when, is it two... Was it two or three? How many years later was it when the fi- when enslaved people finally got the word, you know, in in Texas, where it filtered through after years that um, the Emancipation Proclamation had been had? How many years was it? Do you remember? Miss Vicky, I cannot. Yeah, I think can't remember. All- yeah, yeah, yeah I cannot remember. It's quite a few. Anyway, it was a number of years, which every day is too many. So when it's years, then it's way, 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 way too many. But anyway, so Juneteenth in Buffalo, I want to say, you know, I, I love uh, Juneteenth, you know, in Buffalo is, well, first, it's the second or third biggest Juneteenth in the country. Right. So I think we it's really. It's been that way for a long time, too. And we have a lot to be, we, we just did a show, actually, Corey was supposed to be on the show and then he couldn't make it at the last minute, something came up, but we did a show with, um, with uh, Diane and Rachel Henderson, you know, um, and, uh, and uh, Doug Ruffin of the Buffalo History Channel, we did a show on racism and uh, resilience, um, Black history in Buffalo and talking about how the NAACP, you know, origins were here with the Niagara movement, you know, so the the segregation and the racism, of course, in some ways, you know, strengthened the movement, the people and the and the 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 collaboration, the you know, the the love, black love you know, for each other, for making things work. So, you know, let them do what you want. We'll have our own thing, right? That's, I mean, it's something, it, that's the way it looks to me. Is that the way you see it at all? Or what would you say? Why is, why? how is it that we have one of the three biggest um, uh, Juneteenth? Well, I mean, again, I'm going to be honest. You got yeah, me talking honest. here, Miss Vicky. Yeah, I'm glad. No, Buffalo, honest conversations, right? Buffalo is so segregated. That's mm-hmm. almost one of the things that, oh, the one of the only things that we have. Just to be honest. Right. Buffalo is so segregated. Right. Juneteenth Festival is almost one of the only things that blacks get to have in the summer. <laughs> That they give us, you know what I mean? That right. that they give us where it's for us, not right. what we throw on our own, not what we come together and say, "Hey, we're going to do this for a weekend." No, this is solidified history in the history books all across the country. Every weekend, I mean, every city has the same weekend, but. Buffalo's is one of the biggest because of our divide. Right. You have blacks on the east side. You have Italians on the north side. You have Polish and 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 uh, Irish on the south, and then on the west you got Puerto Ricans and Africans. Right. And that's it. They have their Spanish parade over there, you know, and they they have like you know the everybody day over there. We get Juneteenth. What's the everybody uh, day? Like, you know, on the west side, they have, I don't know what that day is actually called. That was pretty rude saying everybody day. No, I just, but, I, uh, I, no, it's not rude. I just don't no, know what they it have, is. Like, they have like a festival where 
everyone's invited. Not that is it the Allen the Elmwood Arts Festival or something? No, it's over there on Niagara. Oh, on Niagara. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know what that would be. Yeah. Yeah, I mean because you know that that's like the melting pot of the city, the West Side. You have a majority Puerto Ricans, but they have Africans now of all sort, Nigerian, right. Dominican, right. you right. know. Right. Uh, so it, it's just they have their own things going on over there too because Buffalo is so divided. It's well, people that. Mm. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, to me, I mean, I I grew up. Well, my dad. Maybe it's partly because my dad was a German Jew and and he worked, you know, some international work. Oh, I could tell you my story and my dad's story about, you know, and too many people on this show have already heard how he had to leave as a 15 year old because he was such a radical, you know, but he was in, you know, I mean, he was he was uh, beat up the leader of the Hitler youth and, uh, you know, refused to say Heil Hitler when he so he had to leave as a 15 year old. But anyway, he, um, you know, we had a lot of international people coming in out the house. You know, now where, where did up. you grow? Well, we moved around back to that too. You know, so we moved around. We lived in, you know, I lived in Westchester County some, um, a lot. Actually, we kept sort of moving away and moving back to Westchester County, which is near New York City, you know, nearer uh -huh. New York City, but it's the exurbs. But we lived in Kentucky and, um, I lived in California for a while. We lived in England for two years. Um, I was born in New Jersey. We lived in Philly when I was very little. Um, so anyway, so that was a little bit of a mix. So, uh, but, but the, to me, the, all the different, I've always loved all the different cultures, you know, and I think it's so enriching to, and so enjoyable you know, the different, different, you know, the, well, the similarities and the differences, right? Because there's right. none of them that different. Because, you know, like some people say, well, food is really important in my culture. It's like, well, do you know any culture where it isn't very important? Right. I don't, you know, or music, like, you know, music is, well, we all need music. You know, we, it's, a, a, you know, it's a, one of the, it's just such a beautiful way and such a such a powerful way to communicate with people. Right, and bring people together. Right, right. So, so to me, I I love the if it's a Puerto Rican festival or a, you know Juneteenth or or you know any you know any the Italian festival, the Italian festival, the Oktoberfest. I have no, I have no color. Like I love everyone. So right, I'm that's at what the I mean. Festival. Me too. I'm yes. at the Polish festival. I'm, I'm everywhere. Yes. You know what yes. I mean? Let's have all of them. Right. And I'm a foodie too. So that's I, I why I food. wanted to know about the Everybody Festival because. I... That's, right. Yeah. yeah when I right. get when I get the A O K and the right name, I'm getting to you first. You, you need to let me know. Yeah. Now everybody's but, gonna be on Facebook asking me, "Hey, so what's the?" <laughs> <laughs> but the, anyway, the important thing. I mean, the beauty of Juneteenth, and and the well, I just want to say the beauty of the black people. You know, I, I really, I, 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 I think I can say I'm a follower of Cornell West, and I, I yeah, really, I, like I really life. love him. You know, he came to our annual dinner or our annual event two years ago. It was virtual only. We got gypped because he was going to actually oh. come, and we're still. Let's just say, to be continued. We've told him he right. he wants to come. He said he's want to come, but. We'll see. Yeah, he he's, been, he's been here a few times. He's been he's, oh, like, he's I know. been to Buffalo. I know. Yeah. yeah. I interviewed him at UB years ago. Right. That My brother sat next to him then because my brother mm -hmm. went to UB. But anyway, oh, okay. yeah, yeah. But um, I met him when, uh, when, as he put it, we almost got arrested out at Hancock Air Force Base, um, or, uh, the drone central outside of Syracuse. 
So that's how um, I met him. And then we had invited him to be our annual speaker when he came to Rochester. And so he agreed. Um, but anyway, the reason I brought him up is because I have listened to him a lot. And I want to say that is a thing that he really emphasizes is black love is the love yeah. of black people for black people and for all people. And the love warriors that even after being hated and vilified and enslaved and all the murdered and everything else that has happened, still the what comes out. And as you said right, right before when we were talking about it, so now we've had a brutal, heinous, ridiculous, just unthinkable massacre and what came out? Loving, tears, uh, just pure giving back, grief, and, and and pure yes, and giving back, and 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 looking after each other, and 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 honest and honesty, truth and love, unarmed yeah. truth and yeah. unconditional love, and you know and that, laughter. What? I don't want to cut you off. And laughter. I'm doing oh. a show on oh, Jefferson good. called Make Buffalo Laugh, June 25th. Oh, good. Send us the information. We'll definitely promote it. it. June 25th. That's soon. Yep. Yeah, June 25th. Oh, good. You send us that. Now, you have my email now. So you go ahead and send Absolutely. me that information. I'll make sure that we promote it. Because people do need to laugh. That's one of the biggest things people need. Oh, my God. And it's free to the people. Right. Oh, good. Well, I'm going to say laughing is right up there with crying. We need, they're both just healthy expressions that we need right. to be full human beings, to, to live this life, you know, and we need both of them. And they're very close to each other. People, you, we know we can switch back and forth. And I, I right. wouldn't be surprised if we get a little of that. But also, then there's the people who are laughing till they cry. <laughs> yeah. Who are laughing to keep from crying. Right, right. It's all, all going on. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Well, I'm sorry that I don't think that we're going to get Corey back because, uh, I mean, we and we're getting I mean, we're only got really something like uh, five to ten minutes left on the show. So I try I did ask him to try again, but maybe he got caught up with something. Um, I don't I know. know. I, I tried to text him on my phone and it's not being delivered. So I'm going to say his phone might have died. Oh, OK. That must be it. Well, you said can't get back in, though. So maybe he didn't get my <laughs> message of please try. So anyway, they'll be to be continued. I'm so glad you're on with us. And I I only wish that we could see your very kind person there. You're. But anyway, well, I'll let you. I'll let you see her, but she's so shy. Sure, sure. Well, I don't want to. Hi, hi. That's Miss Lisa Wilson, honor roll student. Wow. Uh, junior financial advisor. Ooh. Uh, soon to be entrepreneur. Wow. You want to tell her anything? Wow. Well, thank you okay. for letting us see shy. you. That's all right. I was thinking, That's all right. I'm, I, I try to. You know, I try to pick one of the best students each class and take them out to eat so we're actually outside of red lobster her favorite place and she's anxious to go in what a wonderful and patient young woman she is and that's where i that would be my favorite place too because i i'm a big fan of lobster who wouldn't be yeah. what a good choice great choice well she deserves it well i don't want to keep Absolutely. i don't want to keep uh her from her dinner for too long but uh, as we're just finding, as we're just winding up, let me just, let us just go to this other critical piece that we said. How can yeah. people get more involved and help? One thing is to, uh, we just said we're going to, you know, how you can help yourself, how people can help ourselves is to go to your, um, your show coming up and, and laugh right. together. That's one. And I, 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 I'm raising money to give back to the 10 families. Good. You know what I mean? So All the more. It, it's a free event. It's free right. food. It's brought to you by Wave Buffalo Women Against oh, Violence I know, Everywhere. Wave. I'm, a, I'm, an, I'm, an, I'm still a member. I think they haven't kicked me out yet. 
Yeah, my mentor is Tracy Cooley. That's who oh, got really? me doing the entrepreneur uh, classes and everything like that. Tracy, my love. I know. I she, will. Yeah. <laughs> I was in wave from the very beginning. Oh, <laughs> but somehow, okay. awesome yeah, we've song. been, we haven't, I haven't been as active in the last years. Just, let me just put it this way. There is so much going on all the time. But I, I I'm still, I love wave. Love Tracy, Marilyn, all of them. Yep. Very Those appreciate. are my girls. They are. Well, they're, they, I, I hope, I think I can say they're my girls too. You know, I, I yeah. certainly love and admire them. I'm, I'm a woman against violence and I don't know if I'm everywhere, but I'm, I'm falling right behind them whenever I can. Absolutely. So. Yeah. So it's brought to you by them and myself and wonderful. we have. Kids Day from 12 to 3, we'll have hot, uh, hot dogs, huggies, uh, horseback riding, um, probably a little face painting, all that good stuff. Yeah, June 25th, 12 to 3, Kids Day. 3 to 4, I'm going to have a live band and concert. And then 4 to 6 is the comedy portion. We got over 20 wow. comedians. So where is it going to be? I'm going to have them do about five on Jefferson. Oh, Right wonderful. there next to the, yeah, right yes. next to the library. In Wonderful. between the library right. and Apollo, it's outside. Right. It's free right. for everyone. Wonderful. We got we got the stage Wonderful. blocking off the entire parking lot. So just come up, have hug, hot dogs, hamburgers, food, horseback riding, and get some laughs. Some oh boy, yeah, some love, some love. Yes, 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 definitely. Oh well, I will be there. I'm I'm committing myself right now. I don't know. And I'll email I'm that to you now. Ooh. Please do. Please do. And uh, that'll be my time to catch back up and uh, become an active WAVE member again. Yeah, I so, was going to say, they'll definitely be in the house. And also, if, you, if you're looking for co-sponsorships, let us know. Because the Western New York Peace Center, again, you know, I mean, was part of WAVE when we were first starting it out. Um, so anyway, uh, plus, well, lots of things to be continued. So people should definitely put it on there calendar for june 25th right pretty much of an yep, all day sending, thing right 12th. i'm sending it to your email right now i Wonderful. actually just forwarded um forwarded to the message for uh you and Corey. sure so you both will get it great but great. yeah um it's the 25th of june again yeah it's all day from 12 to 6 12 to 3 is for the kids Wonderful. Um, i'm hosting it i got the other comedian jasmine marks uh -huh. um yeah, it's going to be super fun. Even oh, the gas I can light hardly came. wait. That sounds fantastic. That sounds fantastic. Well, um, so that's a big way people can help, and that's a good time that people can donate to. So, you know, that's the best of all possible worlds. So we can give back and... And and a lot of time back to what we said, things how they're they're intimately connected. So giving and receiving, too. You know, right. people can right. give and Absolutely. receive right at the event, just being together, because we need to. We need to. Well, anyway. <clears throat> so, any final word? Any final word from uh, from your guest there? No. Look, I, look. She just drew this portrait of me. She did. Well, oh, I can't see it. Wait. Oh my goodness, it's me. Oh, okay, wait. Oh, there. Wow. Wow. She's, and she's an artist too. That is fantastic. And she's just sitting there just watching me and then she just what? She did it. Wow. And talk about wow. good use of your time. That and right. art, love. What can I say? Wow. Everything coming together. Well, let me tell you, we'll get Corey back on another time. I want to let you all Go and have that wonderful, much, very much deserved, wonderful dinner. And I want to say, we can't thank you enough. I'm so grateful for you coming on the show. Thank you so much for thank having you, me, Miss Ross. Thank you, guys. Julian. Thanks, Rick. And Corey. And Corey, and yes. And well, Buffalo we thank you. And yes. We're going to get there. So Yeah, we'll, we'll be where we need to be soon, hopefully. We so and later. So grateful to you and Corey and and uh, Miss Nisa there. And uh, so we're going to, you know, together we are talking peace. And together we've been talking peace in truth and love. That's yes. it. That's a wrap. 
Thanks a jillion. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, thank you so much. It was a great, great show.